Hi there, you are watching a video of piping systems in industrial plants. Piping stress analysis is a numerical evaluation of the response of a piping system when the system is subject to various loads such as the self-weight of the pipe, fluid transported, insulation, thermal expansion or construction, pressure thrust, displacements, vibrations, wind and or earthquakes. As seen in the picture on the screen, the most direct way to connect items A and B would be a straight pipe. Obviously, this way the system would be completely rigid. There are basically two ways to provide flexibility to a piping system. By introducing changes in direction of the system, as an spatial loop, or moving one of the items to be connected. The alternative is to install expansion joints. With the exception of straight piping sections, all piping systems have varying degrees of flexibility depending on their configuration. When the changes in direction of a piping system required by the location of the equipment do not provide sufficient flexibility, expansion loops are often used. An expansion joint is a mechanical device designed to absorb expansion and contraction induced by temperature changes in the piping system. Expansion joints have several moving parts and their main advantage over expansion loops is the reduced insulation space required. Due to the high cost, difficulty in handling an installation and high probability of failure, Expansion joints should be used as the last resort to add flexibility to a system. Likewise, the use of expansion joints is not recommended in severe cyclic conditions or in services which can solidify such as liquid sulfur, very heavy crude, etc. Finally, the selection of expansion joints is made according to the expansion stresses and moments in the line. The stages of a flexibility analysis in a piping system is divided in three stages. These are the following. First, stress analysis for sustained loads, pressure, static and dynamic loads. Second, stress analysis due to displacement loads, thermal expansion. And third, analysis of reactions, loads on supports and foundations. All piping systems must meet these conditions. The first step in the stress and flexibility analysis of a piping system involves the calculation of the thermal expansion of the pipe in order to adequately configure the piping system layout. Thermal expansion in pipes is the main cause of most of the induced stresses. The objective of the flexibility and stress analysis is to determine the induced stresses in each point of the system and compare them with the allowable ones. The expansion in pipes is calculated according to the equations indicated on the screen. Thanks to numerous experiences with pipes, different design codes present tables with the coefficients of thermal expansion depending on the pipe material. When the system can freely expand at the ends of intermediate sections, this phenomenon does not represent any problem. However, 
when there are movement restrictions, stresses of considerable magnitude are induced in the piping system. As shown on the screen, it could be concluded that the force induced in the pipe depends fundamentally on its cross-sectional area and the difference of temperature. To get an idea of the magnitude of the forces that can be induced in a piping system, let's look at the following. A 10 inches NPS Schedule 40 pipe, restricted in both ends, to be installed at 20 degrees Celsius and uh, with an operating temperature of 115 degrees Celsius, develops an internal force of approximately 200 tons. This load is transmitted to the ends of the pipe and must be withstood by supports, structures and or equipment's nozzles. Stresses will occur due to sustained loads, displacement loads and occasional loads. The analysis methods for obtaining these three types of stresses and their comparison with the allowable stresses will be described in the following sections. Stresses due to sustained loads, SL, are those longitudinal stresses produced by the weight of the pipe, the internal pressure of the fluid transported, the fluid weight, the thermal insulation, or other gravity loads such as the weight of the valves, flanges, filters, etc. An example of this is the stress induced by the weight of a valve at the end of a cantilever pipe, as shown on the screen. The weight of the system and other loads induce bending moments in the planes of the cross section of the pipe, MI and M0. The resulting bending moment will be the combination of the bending moments acting on the different planes of the pipe. From the resulting bending moment, the stress due to bending is obtained. Finally, the total stress induced in the pipe is the sum of the stresses due to each type of sustained load, pressure, on weight, etc. When the system temperature rises from room or installation temperature to operating temperature, the pipe expands or contracts. Since the system cannot move freely due to restrictions imposed by the equipment and support, it bends and twists, creating bending and torsional moments in different cross sections of the pipe. The figure on the left shows a free system at point 1, while the figure on the right shows a system with an anchor at the same point. The elongated angular shape on the right is generated by thermal expansion, while the system is being restrained at point 1. The resulting bending moment in the pipe due to displacement loads is the combination of the bending moments acting on the different planes. From the resulting bending moment, the stress due to the bending moment is obtained. In addition to the bending moment, the torsional moment must also be obtained as shown on the screen. The stresses due to bending moments and torsional moments are combined by means of a failure theory according to each design code, yielding the total value of stresses induced in the pipe by displacement loads. Allowable stresses of a piping system are determined based on the design code used. In this case, the ASME-B31-3 code has been chosen in order to give the explanation, since it is one of the most restrictive and with the greatest use and application of uh, many industrial plants. It is worth mentioning 
the allowable stresses used in other ASME V31 codes follow the same criteria. To each type of load and induced stress corresponds a type of allowable stress. If the induced stress exceeds the allowable ones, we have to relocate supports, use expansion loops or expansion joints.